Anyway, without further ado, we're going to start our live Q&A. Just a reminder, there should be a number coming up at the bottom of the screen for you to text your questions. There it is, 419-210-5001. Uh, text your questions now. They're going to come to me here on my phone. And I'm going to be asking our panel of experts here. I've got Aaron Wolf, our Director of Engineering here at Chandler Systems, and Bill Chandler himself, the President and uh, Lead R&D Engineer here as well to answer all your questions about the new Dropkick system. Uh, so we're gonna start with a, uh, here, here's someone who's a residential, a, a potential residential customer. I'm assuming it's a, a large residence. They're wondering how would I know when I would wanna go with this system versus a regular Sidekick system. Uh, one of you guys wanna take that? Yeah, you know, the, the system uh, practically works identical to the residential Sidekick. It's just scale and flow rates. So you really probably would not want to use this in a residential application because you most likely would not have the flow rates required to take care of a larger tank. But oxidation wise, these systems all are oxidizing contaminants, you know, before the, or before the outlet and uh, the media and after the valve. So either one does that. But I would think it wouldn't be real practical on a, on a residential level. Mm. And if you're, if you're attracted to drop in general for all of the features and benefits of the leak detection and water shutoff, we, you're probably aware we do have a residential drop sidekick available. Uh, but currently, the, the one we're discussing today, the, the drop kick, is yeah, really going to be for a much larger application than, than what most residences would need. Uh, the next one, someone says, Patrick mentioned ozone killing bacteria buildup. Does the oxygen contribute to bacteria buildup? Yeah, the, uh, it yeah, it would. And putting the active O3 in there, especially on this type of bacteria, we're not talking about coal forms or anything like that. We're talking about uh, sulfur or iron bacteria. The in intermittent exposure to the O3 is real effective at, at controlling and, and eliminating that. Not to mention the O3 has a you know, much more aggressive oxidation level. Yeah, so it's simultaneously helping to oxidize the iron and also helping to control the iron bacteria yep. buildup in the, in the bed. Yes, sir. Yep. The, someone's asking about the plumbing connections on this particular unit. This is an inch and a half, right? Yep. On, on this yeah, valve? Yeah, that's right. In inch and, and a half, in and out, and the drain is a one inch. So the drain's one inch, and all male threaded N NPT that's, connectors? Yes, that's right. Okay. Questions are pouring in. Uh, someone wants to know, what is the max gallons per day or gallons per minute that this filter will handle? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, for the gallons per minute, uh, on a commercial application, continuous duty, uh, we're saying about 12 gallons a minute for this model, which is 21 inch tanks. Uh, that's currently what we're starting out with um, as far as the size of the tank. And as, you know, as we have demand for other, other sizes, we can change that. But uh, it's again uh, around 12 gallon minute uh, continuous but um, in short bursts uh, or even a residential large residential application uh, you might be able to, uh, the max end will be 24 gallon a minute on on peak flow okay so and they also wanted about gallons per day that of course would be contingent on really your iron levels right? yeah and i guess i should say that's per tank obviously per tank. so yes. so as we multiplex these you can get 12 in parallel and as we multiplex these, you can just multiply that up. Right. So that's why we, don't, we can get by with just one size of a tank because as needed, they can just add more tanks instead of offering a lot of different tank sizes. Yeah, and because, um, and because of the ability to reload the air every four hours, especially if you're putting ozone in there, where ozone maybe only has a half-life of four hours, you would want to, you know, would really lean toward multiple tanks. Because you're not air charging on a pump cycle, you're not using compressors, but you can, um, unlike anything else made, you can bring in this air uh, naturally four times, a, you know, over four hours. Mm -hmm. So that way you can replenish your ozone uh, just as it's being defeated. So. 
The next question, I'm assuming this came in anonymously, but I have a suspicion that it is from Mike McNall because it is worded, if I'm a member of the Flat Earth Society and currently use eight track tapes and tube type TVs, can I still buy a commercial reactor? No, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll have to call Mike McNall and ask if, if we'll still sell him a commercial reactor. All right. Now, someone wants to know, is the valve off the floor enough for health department approval? Ron from Johnson Supply. Well, I'm not sure what, the, what, what uh, segment of approval that would be. We would have to check. There's no way for it to aspirate. You know, what you would be worried about, I guess, is whether you could aspirate any liquid or anything down there, but mm. it's completely sealed. And the aspiration, right. the only part that aspirates, is at the very highest point of the system. Right, yes. we are drawing in fresh air, but it's from the top. We're not That's drawing right. anything in down at the, right. at the valve. Um, so. There's no power down there, you know. So, yeah. no, yeah. It, we don't know of any regulation. That we right, inlet outlet connections, but nothing's open. It's, it's, right. all, it's right. all sealed off. Right. Right. And there is several inches of clearance. I don't know what, what the restrictions are that he's talking about specifically there, but there are several inches of clearance uh, right. off the bottom of the floor between the drain would be the absolute lowest point on the valve. Mm. That would be the closest to the floor. Um, so right, like Patrick mentioned, when you're if you have to take the valve off, you unscrew that and drop it down. You've got to have that. It's like four to six inches or so just to be yeah. able to to drop it down. Yeah. That's then right. then after that, it's like any other tripod tank. That's the clearance you'd have. Mm. All right, trying to make sure I'm getting them all here. Uh, what's the maximum amount of iron that you would recommend putting through this system? Just you know, this, this would follow any of our oxidation charts. You know, the amount of iron that you're going to remove is, you know, dependent on the pH levels, just like any of our other ones. Or the sulfur would be dependent on pH levels. Uh, and then whether you were using fresh air or augmenting it with O3. Those things would all have a variation. Generally, you know, uh, the local dealer or the local contractor has a real good feel of how far an oxidation system can go. You know, people like to throw huge numbers out there. We've always been pretty conservative about that. But to our knowledge, this would be handle the highest level of anything we've ever built because we're not oxidizing in the critical elements. You know, we don't out oxidize in the piston or around the piston, and we have a Venturi nozzle if necessary that doesn't have to use oxidized or ox oxygen uh, inundated water to charge. Mm -hmm. So those are the areas that would be uh, typically vulnerable. So definitely, it would, uh, yeah, it would definitely at least be able to do as much as their residential sidekick. But like, like you said, though, we've, with a lot of the things that we've addressed with it, it should, uh, yeah, it should, it should do really well. And if you're using it on manganese, I should add, because these are the kind of questions I get on a daily basis. If you're using it to remove manganese, it's, of course, going to be contingent on your pH level as well as your iron to manganese ratio. A uh, new one here, someone says, is this typically the first tank in a series of conditioners? Depends on what your setup is. Right. But you're always going to put this before a softener, right? Yeah, it'd, it'd always be before a softener. I, yeah, I guess I'm not. It depends on what other filtration you've got there, whether or not you'd have something in front of it. The, not typically. The art that, that uh, CSI has always practiced is, you know, oxidizing filtration first mm -hmm. prior to, to uh, ion exchange. Some people will run ion exchange prior to having any oxygen in it and just use it as an exchange uh, entity. But we've always preferred to use uh, oxidation filtration and then ion exchange. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then they did clarify then and say, for example, before a calcite filter and or a softener, I would say always put the softener after this filter for Absolutely. sure. If you're doing calcite, you would put that before this filter, but it typically wouldn't be necessary to do both this and calcite because the smart blood media will raise the pH. So the only time you would be putting a neutralizer filter in conjunction with this would be if you had a very low pH, like below six. You may need to do a combination neutralizing and You know, uh, in the mid-Atlantic area, this may have come from there. Mm -hmm. It's a real common practice to do neutralizing and softening as the whole iron removal and softening. And this would be an ideal vessel for that because 
of the ability of replenishing the neutralizer would be so easy. Yeah. You spin the cap off and put it on. Yeah, and you may not even, in that application, a lot of times they don't even use the oxidation. They mm -hmm. just use neutralizing and ion exchange, which this is ideal for that because you could just eliminate the air cycle and have really good access to, uh, to the media. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, a lot, uh, related to media, someone is asking, how often would you change out the media, which I assume would be similar to any other system. Yeah. It's gonna be relative to what kind of media you're putting in it and your water quality, your usage. Um, right. exactly. But yeah. just as often as you would on any of our other iron filters. All right. They're coming in. Okay. Someone says, what about farm use, ammonia, or other issues slash odors from atmospheric air being pulled in for air draw. I'm thinking specifically of a chicken farm uh, where you've just got really, uh, really corrosive air quality. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. That may, I don't know if that would be appropriate without some sort of uh, carbon pass. You could pull the air through mm -hmm. an, air, an air carbon. Well, would you um, definitely use the ozone though instead of just sucking in the chicken air? Yeah, the ozone still, it still is, is replaced with O2, so it mm. creates O3. So I can't really answer that. That's a great question. We'd have to. It really, I mean, I'm thinking about that situation. I believe that um, you would be able to pipe in a clean air source to the tanks. Right. And so, if, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you gotta go outside of the building for that, you may have to bring it in through a pipe. But I believe that uh, you could remedy the, remedy that through. Right. So if this is in like a well house or something, you could either have some kind of air purification in that room or pull an outside air. You're saying have, right? Yes. Yeah. And if we wanted to determine whether the O3 could break any of that down, mm -hmm. that would take some subsequent analytics, and I'm not, I'm not in a position to talk about. So. Yeah. All right. I want to make sure I got them all. In the meantime, can we put the number down one more time, just in case anyone has any last minute questions? 419-210-5001. I think I may have one more. Oh, someone's asking about the tank size. Uh, what, what size tank is this? I, I kept gesturing to the tanks behind me, but we never really talked about this size. Uh, you mentioned the flow rate, but the actual dimensions of the tank, as well as how many cubic feet of media do we put in that? 21, 21 inch tanks, uh, seven cubic feet of media. And that uh, again is gonna be our initial offering. Um, we can scale that down certainly as we have demands for that. Um, but that's, that's the standard right out the gate. And then, and then this summer, you know, after we release the two inch, we'll ultimately have a two inch version of this as well. Awesome. Which we could scale. So the whole plan is, you know, based on the success of this release, we could make bigger modules as well. Well, speaking of release dates, when do you think this system will be available? Uh, I know it's a uh, ever-changing, rapidly developing situation. <laughs> yeah, um, to the best of our knowledge, uh, we plan to be on full production in July. Wonderful. So, yeah. Won't, yeah. We won't stop you from ordering one today if you call. Pre-order. <laughs> uh, feel free. Uh, but yeah, we're hoping to ship them in July, you said. Someone's asking, is this able to remove PFOS contamination? I think technically if you put carbon in it, you could, but it's not gonna be certified for that, of course, uh, but with the right media, it certainly could. You wouldn't need the air even, uh, the carbon alone would do it, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kinda, it's really important to, to visualize that the uniqueness of this is the vessel configuration and the way it, it can oxidize uh, on top of the media after the valve, those are the unique things in that you can replenish O3 or air multiple times without compressors and without venturi nozzles. The contaminant removal is still gonna be the same chemistry that we would always use um, for reductions. All right, just a couple more questions here. Um, at what point would you go from a single tank system to a multiplex system? Is that based off of flow rate? Um, I would say the main, main push for that would be flow rate. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is if you don't have a floor drain and you have a drain um, that you actually gotta use the external injectors for, um, 
you, you may want to consider two tanks because when we have two tanks, we can use clean water to feed the injector, which should make that last a lot longer in that situation. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it'd be based on flow rate. Okay. All right, just one more. Uh, I did get someone said, thank you. Uh, this is a very helpful. I want to say you're welcome and thanks for <laughs> tuning in. Join us next time. And finally, this is a great question. Someone says, who should we direct quote requests to if we have applications? Someone's got something in mind. They've got a job they're quoting. They want us to size one up and, and get them some pricing as soon as we can. Contact Mike McNall uh, specifically or call the office. Any of us can help you or at least get you to Mike. Uh, I don't know the number off the top of my head for here, 888-9, yeah. Anyway, you probably know it. You can Google it. <laughs> Look it. Go to uh, dropconnect.com or uh, chandlersystemsinc.com and give us a call. I, I think, I, it, I did have anything one, else to add? Yeah, I had, did have one comment, and it's regarding the Proplex, which we talked about at the end of that uh, session with Patrick. Oh, yeah. Um, and. We actually have made a change in the last week, and the change is that as we were thinking about it um, and actually testing it in the lab, uh, we felt like we could make an improvement on the ability of the flow meters to um, pick up low flow situations. Uh, if we kind of backed in what's in the softeners into the, into the filter. Now we still want, as soon as you get up in your flow a little bit, we still want all filters online, but that that uh, flow meter has a minimum uh, rate that it can read of about uh, three quarters of a gallon a minute. And if you got a low flow rate and a bunch of tanks in parallel, it's very possible that um, you get below and they wouldn't be metering properly. Right. Um, so the change we made was to have, when you're in very low flow rate situations, to only have one tank on, um, and as soon as you get up to two gallons a minute, it'll bring on a second tank. And um, as you add another gallon a minute for each tank, it'll bring, bring others online. And so it'll still do the parallel flow uh, across the filters. Um, and it'll actually, which one is online, will alternate between them. Um, and so we still are taking care of balancing the filter media uh, with the treatment. Um, but it'll give you a better resolution on the low end of flow rates and uh, metering. So no, that makes perfect sense. That's a great, yeah, it's a great addition. Um, and just as a note to that, the firmware, you know, that's going to be released in the next firmware update, which is currently in beta right now. And so our firmware updates, um, you know, that's something unique I think to drop also that we can make improvements and um, if there's a need or um, a feature that uh, we want to add, we can add that and bring it into the system and the end user just simply does the update and they get, th get the new feature. Um, oftentimes an improvement um, in the system, maybe an interaction with another device in the system in a, in a better way or a smarter way. And um, so they can, yeah, I, again, just the firmware updates is a key feature to drop that uh, a lot of other systems uh, you don't have unless you like have someone technical there to plug into it or update it physically. Yeah, um, that's a so massive benefit of, of this format and yeah. something we've never been able to do with any of our previous commercial valves. Um, so definitely that's a huge benefit of drop. I don't know if, um, I don't know if we also want, might want to mention beta uh, for, oh, yeah. for the apps and if you now, you got to be the right person to use beta. You have to have a system that you don't really have in a highly critical situation. Um, Maybe if you're a dealer and you've got this in your personal home. Exactly. That'd be a great person to install. And you do that uh, through Apple. You, um, you, we can give you a link to join the beta program on the Apple side. And if you're on Android, it's right in the Play Store. You just go down and click beta and you can join up the beta program, and just the way we re do software releases. Um, we develop the firmware in-house. We test it as thoroughly as, thoroughly as we can. Uh, then we release it to an alpha where uh, we personally install it on our own systems, and also systems in the labs uh, around the building, um, and continue testing. And once we uh, really get it to a spot where we don't know of any uh, bugs or problems, then we release it to a beta, 
and we try to leave it there uh, for several weeks while, um, you know, to give people the chance to install it, to test it, and to give us feedback. And if you give us feedback that there's a problem uh, when it's in beta, it'd be very quick for us to turn around, uh, make the fix, and, and get a new beta release out for testing. Yeah. So, so that's good. It's good for people to know that we've got that system in place so yes. that when we do release an update, it's not like we wrote this yesterday and it's brand new and you're going to have problems. This has been thoroughly rigorous, rigorously tested. And by the time it's released to the general public, it's, we know it's working. I got one more question based off of what Aaron was talking about. Someone's, this is a good question. Someone wants to know, how can I update my system if there's no Wi-Fi available? Because they know Drop is capable of working uh, on its own network, even if you don't have Wi-Fi in, in the house, even if you don't have internet. Um, it's from your phone or tablet, whatever you're using to interface with the Drop system, you update the Drop app from the App Store. It's got the firmware in the app. So next time, whether you're doing that from a cellular connection or from your Wi-Fi back at a different location, next time you're there on site, your phone is putting that latest firmware onto the Drop Hub straight from the app. So you don't have to have Wi-Fi or internet on site. As long as your phone, your device has an internet connection at some point, if you've got the latest app version on your phone, you've got the latest firmware on there and you can transfer that update to the system from there. Did I explain that properly, yep. Aaron? Yeah, that's exactly okay. right. And that's another huge um, unique feature of Drop over any other IoT product. Because mm -hmm. any other IoT product relies on its communication to the cloud yeah. on, a, on almost a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. And here you can get this, subject it to that, and it just knows what to do after that. Yeah, that's so, a great question. I'm glad they asked that. Yep. Yep. Good. All right, well, hey, thanks for joining us today. I'm sure we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, feel free to visit our website, dropconnect.com, and you can call us or email us from there. Thanks. Have a good day.